you can't take everyone with you. And, so true. And that is a part of the transitional pain <laughs> right. of anyone who's deciding to move out of the status quo. Because every single time I decided to elevate, I lost friends. And it was always my fault. Always going to be your fault. Yeah. yeah. You, you've you left them. No, it's... You've changed. That's right. And that's you know, right. You know why they say that? Because you did. That's right. You absolutely <laughs> changed. You, so you can't go, no, I didn't. No, you did. Because <laughs> yeah. you had to. Yeah. It was out of necessity. But you know what we don't say back because we don't have the courage? Yeah. But you didn't. And that's the unspoken conversation that needs to be had. And one of the great challenges, I'm Latino, you know, and Latinos, they, they, they're all about family. Yes, sir. In fact, you know, I, I, in our community, we have a lot of Asians mm -hmm. and a lot of Caucasians, a lot of um, black Americans, a lot of, you know, probably 40 different nationalities. Yep. It's not all the same. Cultural pressure is not the same. Correct. Like in, 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 in many Asian families, it's very much succeed, succeed, right. succeed. That's right. You, you know? And it's like four jobs too. Doctor, yeah. lawyer, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Physician. But, yeah. But in the Asian family, it's succeed, but you're still family. That's right. Kind of like the white family. Yeah. It's like, just succeed, you can move away. <laughs> you, right, right, exactly, exactly. Fact, Go wherever you want. If you're still at home, what, you, what are you doing here? Yeah, this is that, it's so true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness, but, it's so true. But are you Latino? Yes, All right, with Latino families, you guys can confirm or deny, you don't have to succeed, you just stay ho close to home. That's right. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> in fact, what are you doing going to college? Right, 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 right. <laughs> and why are you going to college in a different state? That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, mijo, there's one right down the street. I don't understand why yeah. you won't go there. That's right. <laughs> you go to night school. <laughs> <laughs> and help daddy in the day at the store. Yeah, what is right. the problem? Yeah. And, and so there's different cultural pressures. And when you're like, and so I'm, I have this Latin soul where everyone who's in my circle, I want to take with me. Of course. Because I feel like this moral responsibility. You know what the hardest thing was? To go to people I love and say, I've created this company, I've created this opportunity, and I want you to come and I want you to work with me, and you're going to get paid way more, and you're going to have no ceiling. And they go, yeah, that's okay. Wow. And, and I go, what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and I would go back again and again and again thinking they'll get it eventually. Yep. Like they'll they'll see how my life is changing and they'll realize their life could change too. Yeah. And they don't want the responsibility. They don't want it. Mm -mm. No, they don't, they don't want, want it. it at all. That's right. And, and and I remember this one couple, he went to Harvard, she went to Duke. So they were super educated. Yep. And for one year, they were friends with me and my wife. And for one year. For one year. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> and after the year, I mean, they were still part of our community at Mosaic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But um, but they just chose other people. Yeah. You know? and, and, you know, my wife, Kim's like, are we ever going to have friends? Yeah. <laughs> you know? right, exactly. And, uh, and so I said, why don't we go interview them? Yeah. And see how we can fix us. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, so that we can have friends as couples. <laughs> right, you know? right, exactly. And, uh, and and so we sat down with them and said, hey, what did we do? Because we see you're, you've made other friends and, you know, we brought you in our home. You were part of our life. Yeah. And they said, can we be just straight up honest? We said, of course, that's why we're meeting with you. He said, it's just too much pressure to be your friend. Interesting. He said, when we're around you, we feel like we have to be more. Have to elevate, have to risk. Mm. have to change, mm. have to grow. Mm. And I said, I'm good with that. Absolutely. Like, and, and, I, and the loneliest time for any person trying to achieve something is the transitional period between losing the friends they had and not gaining the friends they're going to have. Because the lie in the middle of that, the yeah. during, yeah. is that I will always be alone. Yeah. That's and it right. is temporary. Yeah, but it's only temporary if you choose to recognize there are new friends waiting for you. That's exactly right. That's exactly know? right. That's and, exactly right. And 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 part of my challenge in life was, um, it's hard to say this just openly, but 
most of the people that I tried to be friends with were people I was trying to pull up. For sure, absolutely. Because I felt, you know, one that was like my Jesus mandate in yep. life. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 you, you right exactly. And is also the way I'm, my personality is built. Yeah, for sure. And so I was always filled with people who didn't feel like they could really be my friend because the rate of speed at which I was moving was not the rate of speech at which they were comfortable. Right, absolutely. And the moment I gave myself permission to be friends with people who had achieved a lot more than me, all of a sudden I, I was just flourishing with friends. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, and now I'm like, I'm with friends with, I have, my wife said, I have more friends now than I've ever had in my whole life. Wow. And it's, it's insane. Yep. And, and they're all better than me at something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, absolutely. So they're not intimidated by me. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know? That's right. Yeah. And, uh, we all like, fit right in with each other. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. always the poorest guy in the room. Yeah. Seems like, you know, and, uh, you know. well, when, it's, when it's a $40 billion company. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Hey, believe me, it's painful when it's your turn to pay. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, man, I'm putting my life savings down for this dinner. <laughs> and, uh, and, but, and so they, uh, sometimes I have to say to them, hey, guys, you just have to realize we're not all in the same. That's F1 exactly car right. right That's exactly know? right. Yeah, exactly. You, you in an F1, I'm in a Dodge Dart. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're moving. And, uh, uh, but, but I have something to contribute that they don't have access to. That's correct. Absolutely correct. And so you have to value what you bring. That's right. And when you do, um, you're able to value what they bring, and then you end up having incredibly beautiful Absolutely. relationships. Well, it go it goes back to that. Um, uh, you know, you've got to go back a, a couple of hundred years to where the blacksmith mm -hmm. was a blacksmith, <laughs> right? And the tailor was a tailor. And when you needed your clothes hemmed, you went to the tailor. And when you needed a garden tool or a weapon, you went to the blacksmith. And the, the tailor wasn't trying to get better at blacksmithing. Mm -hmm. And nor was the blacksmith trying to get better at tailoring. And so when you're in that room and you're like, I'm the tailor. <laughs> yes, you own that company. You're amazing. And I could listen to you for a year and I'm not going to become you and have your, you know, gross annual income. But you also can't fix your own hymn. 